Imagine filling your yard or garden with gorgeous plants that will thrive without a lot of effort. That sounds too good to be true, right? Well, it's actually possible when you know the right pairings for some of Utah's most beautiful native plants. Cynthia B. from Jordan Valley Water Conservation Garden is here with her favorite native plant combinations. And Cynthia, I think one of the myths that goes around about plants for this type of environment is that they're colorful, colorless and kind of dull, boring. Right, that they just don't have a lot of interest or they can't be an asset to your garden. But really, there are some amazing uh, native plants that will give you some great color and some great interest and, you know, decrease how much work you're having to do. See, and, and I think that that is the key for most people, right? Like getting the decreased workload, but still the color and the beauty. Yes. So you brought on a few different kinds, and the first one that you talk about is a perennial. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about evergreen perennials. Most people don't even know those exist, that you can get perennials that are evergreen. I don't know So one I of my that. favorites is this little guy right here. This is called Kinnikinnik or bearberry. Now yeah. that one is worth buying just so that you can Isn't the name? have it's a fun to say, huh? Right? Yeah, and then, you know, it has little tiny flowers that are kind of minuscule, but really it's this evergreen foliage. And once you have that and it fills in, you don't even have to rake leaves. You know, it's just this nice evergreen that will fill a low area, and it's a super drought tolerant plant. And it is really pretty. I mean, it's got a little bit of that waxy look to it, this shiny yep. green, which I love. And we're contrasting it's that a little bit with this whorehound. And then, um, also which a perennial? Is a, yep, and that's, uh, that's one that's deer resistant as well. And, um, and then, of course, there's others that we can add with that. But that gives you some of that perennial. I love that sulfur buckwheat, too. I don't have an example of that one, but not only is it evergreen, but it actually gets a burgundy leaf in the winter that gives it even additional interest. So, oh, neat. Some and of our native whorehound is another one. Yes, for. and that's an herb. And you can see this right here. We have one on display here. And it's just kind of interesting texture and foliage. And then an another thing that gardeners are often challenged with is those awkward spaces. Yes, you know, you know, doing a great landscape is, is kind of a spend and save thing. There are areas where we want to spend money and make great spaces, and there's areas we just need to fill with something that will stretch the budget. <laughs> right. So my favorite for that is Desert Four O'Clock. Um, I don't have one here because it's just it's a little late to emerge, but one eight, you know, one gallon perennial will fill a space that's five feet by five feet. Oh, you're kidding, that's huge. So and it's super drought tolerant and will bloom the entire summer. Does so, it start small and then kind of grow from yep, there? But it comes from a oh, tap root, so it doesn't spread obnoxiously. It's just beautiful and fills in spaces it's so nicely. So contrast that. Yeah, and then contrast it with some of the spikiness of the yucca. Um, you know, that makes it extra interesting and that just kind of gives you some of that you know, that long season, yet you're not gonna have to do much in that area. In fact, the maintenance on that desert four o'clock at the end of the season, it detaches, you grab it and throw it away. Oh, and that comes yes. back from that's the root the I'm next year. So that's super low maintenance and a great way to stretch the planting budget. Do the blooms stay? Yeah, the blooms will go from June until hard frost. Wow. So really long so season of bloom. And they open and close during the day. So that's kind of fun too. You mentioned also the palmers. Palmer's Penstemon is beautiful. It's a tall, spiky, uh, with big pink flowers. That's one of our native perennials. Uh, Utah is, is the land of Penstemon. There are more beautiful Penstemons that grow here than anywhere else in the world. So uh, that's just a nice one to give it a little extra contrast of shape and texture. That is fun. And mixing those together, you can see how, yep. how pretty that would be. Now, what about plant combinations that have those longer bloom seasons? Because people love color. Yeah, if you were going to plant one perennial in your entire yard, it should be this one, Sundancer Daisy. It's my all-time favorite. It's already started blooming, and it will not stop blooming. For us, it bloomed as late as December last year. Oh, you're kidding. So the Sundancer Daisy, this one's Soul Dancer, which uh, Utah State Extension actually brought into cultivation, and it's an amazing plant, one of my favorites. And works really well in this dry And it climate. pairs so beautifully with everything. It's small, it's tidy, and it blooms nonstop. What's not to love? No, <laughs> that pretty much sums it up right there. <gasps> yep. So, and then of course the fire chalice is great for a little later in the season to give you some of that bright orange and it's beautiful into the fall. And yeah, that's just a great little mix of plants that'll do great. And, and kind of keep their bloom long into the season. Right, just to help span between, you know, the times when other things aren't blooming. You also have a really fun kind of patriotic combination. My little red, white, blue, yes. So everybody, who doesn't love blue flowers? I so love blue flowers. In fact, blue we flax is great. The day, my child saw a carnation that was blue, and I said, no, that yes. is a natural. Not that kind of blue, the other kind of blue. Exactly. Right? In fact, you'll see the blue flax blooming right now. Um, if you see, you know, beautiful banks of light blue, sky blue flowers, that's the blue flax. Uh, but it's also great paired with some penstemon and some sages. Now, I love the silver sage because it's got these great, big, white, hairy leaves that look amazing even when there aren't flowers. And that is one of the big secrets is to always look for plants that have some cool foliage so that you're getting that contrast 
between those shapes and that will make you know your plants more interesting even when they aren't in bloom and kind of combining them what about sunshade issues with most of these plants. So a lot of our natives like the sun. That first combination I showed, the evergreen perennials can take the part shade. Um, the one thing that I find is a big myth is people think if I have a native plant, then it's no maintenance and no water. And that's not really true. In the heat of July, you may need to give it water occasionally. Uh, and you still want to watch the plant and, and you know take care of that. And they still have leaves and they still need to be cut back, you know. So be aware of those things, but they're just going to, they're right. hardy enough to withstand this kind of Right. Climate. The biggest mistake I see with native plants is that people water them the same way they water the lawn. And if you're watering your planting beds the same way as the lawn, whether it's native plants or regular plants, you are totally overwatering the planting beds. And that's why you're getting so many weeds. Wow. So we want to give them the amount of water they need. So they don't need a lot, but every now and then, we want to give them a nice hit. So where can we find more information about this? So if you follow Conservation Garden Park on Facebook, we are constantly posting different plant combinations and ideas and tips for gardeners for gardening right here in Utah. Perfect. Okay, we will also post these tips and these plants on our website. Thanks so much. Thanks.